Hey, everybody. Welcome to Perpetual Motion, a podcast focused on lifestyle, self-care, personal empowerment, and positive relationships. I'm your host, Dr. Mo Anderson. Each episode, I interview thought leaders from all over the world who share tips, tools, and techniques that will add immediate value to your personal and professional growth. If that sounds good to you, stay tuned and turn up the volume because my guest today is Yuri Dorashuk and we're chatting about how to lose all of your weight in one year while successfully managing your household. And if you've got a busy household and a desk job like most of us, you know how very hard that can be. But before we jump into the interview, I need a quick favor. Friends, old friends, new friends, let's make this official and hit that subscribe button. That's it. Easy peasy. That's the only thing I'm going to ask. Now I'm starting to give back. Welcome, Yuri. Man, it is such an honor, Dr. Mo, to be here to chat with you and, and improve our life together. Indeed, indeed. Yuri, you had a wake-up call. Ten years after your wedding, you found yourself overweight, clothes a little tight. We all know that are doing the button and not feeling so great. Low, low energy, patience, all of that most of us are familiar with. And you knew it was time for a change. Where did you start? Great question. Yeah, I, you know, to my credit, Dr. Mo, I had the most amazing dad bod, all right? I worked on it for, <laughs> for quite some time. Uh, That's a it first. Was, yeah, it, it, I mean, I had it just, mm. so, but back in 2018, you know, I'm on an airplane and I'm telling you that seatbelt is like suffocating me. My mm. pants are about to rip. So I had to like undo my uh, pants, a uh, belt and button just so I could breathe. And I knew at that moment, I a, didn't want to buy larger clothes because I mm -hmm. was already on the larger set. You know how we have two sets when we're yeah. skinnier oh, yeah, we and then when we kind of gain a little <laughs> bit of weight? Right. Well, I was already on that set. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to buy a third set. So I knew something had to change. We had our fourth kid on the way. I was always tired, exhausted. Uh, it, I hate to admit this. I would come home after work and look at my watch wondering when's bedtime for the kids because mm -hmm. I was exhausted at the end of the day. And I'm yeah, like, wait a second. Real. Like, yeah, it's real. And I thought, you know, I'm a dad. And instead of just looking forward to when they grow up, there had to be more in the present season, right? Like investing in your kids, being there mm -hmm. and just living in the moment and enjoying yes. their toddler years, uh, their middle school years. And, and so I knew something had to change and I knew it had to begin with me. And so that's when I went on this journey of losing 65 pounds in a way that I wouldn't sacrifice my family. Cause that's a big one. I mean, we're already busy. And to mm -hmm. add just another thing, whether you're a mom or, or dad, add another thing to the list of things you're already doing can feel overwhelming. So I knew it had to be in such a way that I didn't put my kids on the altar because dad had to get in shape, right. uh, but it, I had to incorporate them and, and just make it like a family thing. And that's what I did. And so a year later, back in 2018, I lost all 65 pounds. And then I challenged my kids, you know, I dare you to wear me out. I will run circles around you, kids. Uh, <laughs> and so I'd come home. Competitive. <laughs> come on. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's funny you say competitive because it's amazing. When we start looking better and feeling better, we got that little lion in us that wants to come mm -hmm. out. Whether yeah. you're a mom or a dad or someone that's never been competitive, like, you start feeling better, you, you got a little tiger in you. Uh, that's exactly what happened. And so after work, I would come home and I wasn't as tired. I was, it was like halftime. Let's go, kids. Let's play. So I was able to show up more powerfully uh, for my kids, my marriage. Um, and, and I just realized, like, wow, when we take care of our health and fitness and we look and feel good, that has a meta effect on every other area of our life. 
Mm. Oftentimes we're like, okay, how do I become a better parent? How do I become a better spouse? How do I become a better community leader? And we're looking for things and it like time out. How do you feel inside? How do I become like, a better me? Right. <laughs> better me. Cause when you become a better you and your cup is full, Mm -hmm. You're able to show up more powerfully in every other area of our life. That's why I do what I do, because it starts with us, how we look and feel, and then it goes outward. Absolutely. And, you know, we think about that so much in terms of mental health. Now that we're finally coming around as a, a country, a culture to understanding the importance of, of a healthy mind and that that might take some intervention from someone else or it might take medication, that, that also that physical part of us, which can be impacting our minds, is so, so critical. And to have stamina, I mean, because I've been down a couple of times after some difficult surgeries, and I know what it feels like to just be fatigued, crazy, and I work a 10-hour job, so I get that, even as grandma. I get that. So grandparents, stay tuned. Listen up because this applies to you, too. You mm -hmm. can be an energetic grandparent. I don't want to be the grandma in the rocking chair passing out peppermint. You know, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll jump on the I'll jump Although on the kids trampoline. would love you for that. Kids would love you they, for those peppermints. They would, but the parents don't. And yeah. I, I don't think we get the same memory from that experience as, you know, when I go go-kart riding with them or we're playing in the park. And, and you know, no shade on, on the rocking chair folks. But I really like being engaged and, and it's important as a parent. So this is good information for you, whatever your role you're playing uh, in others' lives and in, in your own life. You, you said that you kind of let your family know what you were trying to do. And, and I'm sure they were supportive of you. But how do you I want to go back to how do you have that conversation? Because sometimes people don't really involve the family and you're back to that grumpiness that you were trying to get beyond because, you know, everybody's unhappy with what's going on. So how do you have that conversation and get, get the support that you need? Yeah. So uh, I had a conversation with my wife saying, Hey, this is what I need to do. Um, and you know, I'll be honest, this wasn't my first weight loss journey. I've had mm -hmm three other short stints of losing 15, 20 pounds, getting excited, getting compliments, but then growing complacent and slipping back to my old patterns and routines. And then mm -hmm. a year or two uh, later, I was back to where I was. So this wasn't my first rodeo. I was chasing that 15, 20 pounds like we all do, right? <laughs> right. And so I knew it had to be different this time. I needed a new strategy. Uh, I needed a different approach. And oftentimes what I found, like just talking with clients and people, we have that strategy that we've done in the past, worked mm -hmm. for a little bit, but mm -hmm. then we'd go back to kind of our old habits. And so, you know, if you think of a field, We've already have that road paved of what we tend to go to when we want to quote unquote lose weight. And right. so a lot of people have that, whether it's fasting, whether it's like getting rid of all carbs, whatever diet, quote unquote. And here's the reality. If you go down that path again, it's easy at first because the road is paved for you, but you're going to get the same result. And so the way I measure if something quote unquote works, it's not if you were able to just lose the weight, but were you able to do it in such a way that once you reached your goal, there was mm -hmm. nothing else to go back to because the way you lost weight was realistic, sustainable, and enjoyable. Like for me, that is the measurement of something quote unquote working. So I knew like I needed a different strategy. So I sat with my wife. I sat with my wife and said, listen, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to just work out three times a week. Okay. That's the sacrifice three times mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. And baby, I'm going to start making my own food. You see, because mm -hmm. I knew Dr. Mo, I needed to take 100% ownership over my results. I couldn't expect somebody else to quote unquote, help me or to rely on them. And I knew there'd right. be times my wife would be at work and I'd be faced with the decision. Do I make my own food or do I go and get something quick because it's convenient? So mm -hmm. I had to take ownership over all aspects. And so 
I told her three times a week and I saw the, like the, oh, so you're working all day and then three times you're gone in the evenings. Oh, you're taking away kinda, from family time. Yeah. That's when I hit her with the left hook and that was this. I said, <laughs> but here's the cool part, babe. The kids, uh, the gym has a kids club. Yeah. And so I, <laughs> yes, I'm going to take all of them with me and you get some me time, alone time. She said, go five days a week. I don't care. <laughs> and, and that was the strategy for me that I took the kids to the gym while my wife had a, a moment to just unwind because she was with them uh, all morning and afternoon. And, and so here's the other cool part that happened. Kids were starting to be exposed to the gym. All right. Kids will do not what you tell them to do. We all know this, but what they see us do. Show me. And so by bringing them to the gym, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would catch them many times peeking through the glass window, looking at me working out. And then we'd like make that eye contact and they would like lift up their arms and like, oh, dad, yeah. Uh, but it was, it, was, it was great. And so today, our oldest is 10 years old. Now she's working out with me. I didn't ask her to. She's like, Dad, I'm getting too old for Kids Club. Can I just work out with you? And so the gym has a policy at 10 years old, you could work out, you know, with your child. And so mm -hmm. we do that. It's not something I'm telling her to do. She wants to. So it's created a um, kind of health and fitness culture for the family. That's um, beautiful. And so it was a win. I call it a classic win-win in a marriage. Wife is happy about it because she gets alone time. And I get to engage with the kids and they're exposed to the health and fitness culture and community. Um, and that's kind of how I did it without taking time away from the family. Right. Because we have so little time as it is. We're all working very hard. And then we've got these other enterprises like podcasting and speaking and other things we do. And yeah, that that's going to be the reaction, if, particularly if you don't get people on board, which so many times we just announce <laughs> what we're doing, but right. we don't get input and engagement like we do at work. And, and my listeners who listen routinely know I'm very big on treating your family better than you treat the people at the office, because too often we bring home the leftovers mm. uh, to our family. So, and yeah, fast food is, is so often fat food, take the S out of it. And, but it's so convenient and they've got it so cheap. It's mass produced with all that salt and all those preservatives. So this, this takes some discipline and some commitment because now you're talking about cooking and going to the gym, two things that you were previously not doing regularly. So how do you, when you talk about cooking, how did, were you cooking separate meals for yourself and the family or did that also change for everyone? You know, I knew I was onto something when my kids wanted to eat my food off my plate that was helping me lose weight. And so, and so what I did was I made food for the whole family the same food because as a busy parent, nobody has time to make separate meals. Mm -mm. Um, and so my kind of philosophy with nutrition is eat your carbs, eat, eat your healthy fats, eat your proteins. We, those macronutrients are designed for our body. And if you take one of those out, you will only be able to succeed until your willpower dies out. And it's mm -hmm. not a question of if it will, it's when it does. And so I ate rice, pasta, potatoes on a regular basis. I then incorporated more veggies with all my meals because that is very low calorie. And it kind of fills you up because the volume of the vegetables is, is large. And then I increased my protein intake. And that's key because when we increase our protein intake, we feel full longer. So we're able to go longer without wanting to snack or, or put something into our mouth. The problem is by default, most snacks are heavy on carbs and mm -hmm. carbs, nothing wrong with carbs. It just it will leave you hungry soon after. So right. if you swap those carb snacks for protein, like 
beef jerky, uh, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, and I would sprinkle fruit on top just to kind of make it a little bit more sweet. And with it nuts, held me over. nuts go in that group too. I think nuts uh, are protein. No, I, I don't put nuts, and here's why: because it's okay. they do have protein, but there's more fat. And the thing oh. with more fat is it's more fat is more dense, meaning for very little, you get a lot of calories. Okay. And so the name of the game is to eat less calories. But if you mm -hmm. don't want to feel hungry, if you don't want to like, like, oh, man, I got to go to bed because I'm starving and I can't eat anymore. If you don't want that <laughs> miserable feeling. And I've had you took, those you took, you took that out of my hand. No, not you. But you took that out. I've got to, I can't yield to temptation if I'm asleep. Yes. Yes. So I got to go to bed. It's like 6 p.m. Like I got to go right. to bed before. Um, so I would say uh, snacks that have a lot of fat, like peanut butter. There is some mm -hmm. protein, but it's really not a protein snack. Um, you want to limit those things because they're going to eat up your calorie allowance for the day really quickly. Let me give you a quick illustration. Let's say you have 20 bucks, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can do whatever you want with 20 bucks. And you're at Disney World. You could A, buy a $20 water bottle, Aquafina, Dasani, right? At Disney World for 20 bucks, probably not that much, but it's a little close. exaggeration. <laughs> I was there or close, <laughs> close, right? <laughs> Or you can wait, go across the street to a racetrack or whatever gas station and buy it for two bucks. Which do you do? You have 20 bucks. You could spend it any way you want. But I would bank on just going across the street, buying it for two bucks. It's the same thing with calories. You could okay. eat whatever you want. So as long as you're in a calorie deficit for weight loss, the question is, how do I get the biggest bang for my buck? Okay. Okay. And Eating nuts high in fat, little protein will eat up your calories real quickly. So again, I go for just the protein. And so uh, that is key. And, and meals, same thing. So although avocados, we hear, oh, healthy fat. But healthy is not synonymous with weight loss. So if, if you're trying to lose weight, and that's your primary goal, mm -hmm. then things like olive oil, very high in fat, very dense. I, st I stayed away from it. Um, avocado, cheese, nuts. Those are things we hear like, oh, it's healthy fats. Those are good for you. They are healthy, but you could eat too much healthy and gain weight. Two different things, weight loss and healthy eating. So I replaced uh, cooking oil uh, for nonstick spray. I got like a non-GMO nonstick spray. And so now my two eggs are only 140 calories instead of putting oil, making or those butter. two. Or like butter. Like they do in the South, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Because, and why do we do that? Because we saw mom do it. We saw grandma right. do it. And we just say, well, that's what you do. You don't want well, your eggs to stick. But you're the flavor is different too. So they I, touch on that a little bit. That's why I do it because it just tastes better to me. Okay. Yes. So two things there. Number one, your taste buds will adjust, right? Okay. We've all heard that in, in the UK, they don't put as much salt. And Americans are like, oh, the food is bland. Mm -hmm. It's not for them. Well, how can that be? Same food, but people are tasting it differently. It's your taste buds. So number one, your taste buds will adjust, okay? You okay. remember trying coffee for the first time? You probably thought it was nasty. And now most of us, we can't live without it. Taste buds adjust. Okay. Uh, number two, as far as taste, there are ways to add flavor to our food. Like seasoning is fair game because there's no calories. Okay. And then like tomato-based uh, stuff like salsa. Um, if you're into like spicy sauces and things like that, that's Tabasco sauce. That has very, very little calories. So there are ways to add tons of flavor to your meal without adding calories. And so Sweet. watch this. Watch this. You have two eggs with one tablespoon of olive oil, let's say. That's 280 calories. Watch. 
I could have four eggs with nonstick spray, and that is also 280 calories. And so you had two eggs with oil, which oil doesn't add volume. It just creates density in your food. And I had four eggs, no oil. Who do you think is going to be full longer? Me, because I had more eggs, more volume. And so that leads me to the next thing. Portion control doesn't necessarily work because you could have little, but if it's very dense in your in calories, then you may easily overeat. So the name of the game for me was how can I eat a lot, but less calories? And that's yeah. by adding vegetables and that's getting rid of those kind of secret uh, I mean, the the hidden calories that we find in oils, in dressings, salad and dressing. That's what I was thinking. And then when sauces. I found out how much was in ranch, I used to drown everything in ranch thinking I was doing good. And then I saw the sugar and calories. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and it's hidden. You're, you're right. It, even in the and we don't have time to get into labeling. And, mm -hmm. and how some manufacturers are misleading us, you know, with what they're, how they're advertising products to make they make us think that they're healthy or organic or whatever. But let's let's we're going to come back to that in another conversation. We'll have yes. to have you back. You you, I like the way that you got the family involved. You're spending quality time, and those are memories that your kids will have forever going to the gym with that with that when they're taking their kids to the gym or for a walk or for a bike ride and folks don't tune out if you can't afford the gym there are other ways you can spend time with your family and and move and be active but in regards to that when you're first starting out like you said you're just really tired you've got into gotten into a sedentary type of lifestyle how do parents start this if they are tired and, and just very, very busy. Some people are working three, four, and five jobs. Can you give them some tips on how they can just begin? 100%. So when I first began, I kind of omitted this, but you just reminded me. Um, I started in my living room, and I got cheap $20 bands off of Amazon online, mm -hmm. and I would start in my living room 15, 20-minute workouts. And my kids would be, you know, between my legs and, and I'd look where, where'd the dumbbell go. And my toddler like walked off with it into another room, right? We kind of had this family <laughs> workout. You had a strong um, toddler or a light yes, dumbbell. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. My, my daughter. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, so start simple. A lot of times we try to get everything perfect before mm -hmm. we start. Oh, I need a fancy gym. I need two hours a day. And no, 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 no. Here's what I teach my clients. I say, create the habit and routine first. Don't try to go optimal. Can you say, hey, I've worked out in my living room with some bands, doing some YouTube workouts, three times a week for 15 minutes each time for the last three months. Yuri, can you help me now optimize my workouts? I would rather have that type of person. That's just then the person that's in inactivity because they're trying to get all their ducks lined up in a row. Mm -hmm. And so the key is just start some sort of movement. Do full body workouts, just your body, some squats, some push-ups. Just go on YouTube and Google no equipment workouts. You'll, you'll get some routines and do it. The key is to create habits and routines. And after that, then you can start asking, well, how can I have a better workout? How can I elevate my game, right? And then it's much easier to make those tweaks to something you've been doing than trying to make it perfect before you start. It's easier to push yeah. a moving car than a you know parked car. So I'd say, yeah. hey, 10, 15 minutes, get some movement in your living room. Turn on your favorite TV show or your, let your kids or grandkids watch some cartoons while you just work out in the living room. I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many times I had the football game on on Sunday. I wheeled out my stationary bike into my living room 
I'm thinking I was going to sit on the couch. Why not just sit on the bike and pedal and do it. for 20 minutes? And- and see, right? for me, it's my jogging trampoline. I've got a ah. little jogging trampoline that my grandkids love. And it's so easy to be on that while I watch. I like to watch the news. While I watch the news, I can do that and just walk or jump on it. And, you know, I'm getting in a workout, but I'm also indulging in what I would be doing after work anyway. So that you're right about setting up those patterns and starting small. And I would think you're also less likely to get injured too than if you try to do that you know weekend warrior thing but during the week just jump out there i'm gonna work out for an hour right yeah 100 percent. like i ask every client coming in or potential client i ask this question when when was the last time you worked out three to four times a week for more than six months consecutively okay that's the question i ask everyone and 99 percent of the time people will say never or high school Mm -hmm. And point being is this, we all have short stints of, I'm going to start working out and we'll go three, four times a week to the gym, work out for an hour. Like we're excited. And then like, (laughs) yeah, beast mode. Let's go. And then it's on social media. Like, oh, we're we're on this journey. And then six weeks later, it's a bunch of crickets. All right. Mm -hmm. And so I would rather have someone do 15, 20 minute, you know, living room workouts for the rest of their life, then going Rambo, going all in, and then two months later, you're back to in an activity. And that's gonna last for another few years until you're like, okay, I gotta get my you know health in check again. And you're in this perpetual like cycle of going all in, burn burning out, and going all in, burning out, maybe getting injured, right? Uh, right. And so just start creating this habit and leading it into a lifestyle. And that'll stop us from losing the same 10 pounds over and over. Somebody yes. told me one time, yes, I've lost a hundred pounds. I've lost the same 10 pounds 10 times. That's hilarious. So, I've never heard yeah. it like that. <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's where many of us are. And, and it kind of messes with you mentally and emotionally too. You start, you know, feeling like the failure. I don't want to try anymore when, Actually, uh, your approach makes a lot more sense is to, you know, portion control and set up those habits and uh, become more disciplined about it and then go go harder, elevate it real quickly. We're, I, I just, you know, enjoyed this conversation. I think you're getting given some really good tips that could benefit anyone. But I started by saying we were going to talk about how to lose all of your weight in one year while managing your household. And we've gone all around it, but succinctly, can you tell folks how to do that? Being consistent. So the first thing you got to do, there's four phases. Phase number one is awareness. All right. What and how much are you eating? So log it, track it, get download my fitness pal and start logging everything that you're eating. And so you want to become aware of what you're doing currently. Okay. That's take an inventory. The next phase is uh, accuracy. Now you want to eat consistently in a calorie deficit. I'm going to give you a quick equation because I'm real practical. Whatever your goal weight times 12, shoot for that calorie uh, goal each day. Your goal weight times 12. It's a very simple, but it's a great starting point. Shoot for that. And then log your food into MyFitnessPal. It's a free app. And make sure you hit that number. All right? And start exercising three times a week. Because you don't want to lose your muscle during weight loss. You want to lose fat, not muscle. Mm -hmm. And then as you're rolling, then ask yourself, okay, what can I now do more? So we went from awareness to accuracy and now accelerate. What can I do more to accelerate my progress? Can I go to the gym one more time? Can Mm -hmm. I increase my workouts by 10 minutes? Can I walk more instead of parking at the very front at the grocery store, fight for the last parking spot and walk? Okay, that's extra movement. Stop taking the elevator and escalators unless, you know, you have some health condition and take the stairs. 
add movement, be intentional mm-hmm. about adding movement. So that's more accelerate phase. And then in the advanced phase, that's when, when I'm asking the question, okay, what foods can I swap? Because maybe they're not as healthy for me. Can I eat a healthier version of, of this? Notice that wasn't in the very beginning because that's what overwhelms people. Oh, this is bad for you. Don't eat this. And da, 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 da. and like there's so much we can do and it's mm-hmm. overwhelming and we just don't start. So the right. whole, hey, is there something healthier that I could eat while being in a calorie deficit? That's more advanced. That happens later on. All right. First, you want to just take inventory awareness. Second, it's uh accuracy let's get in that calorie deficit and stay there third Mm -hmm. phase is accelerate how can i speed up my results and then the fourth phase is advance Uh, how can i maybe swap foods for healthier and that's basically my 4a formula i love that formula very practical it makes sense because i'm one of those people i need things to make sense i can't just do it because you said it (laughs) i love it me too yeah, I've got to understand the logic. Wait, what? Why would I do that? You know, yep. and then I, I could take it all the way, but I've got to understand why we're doing what we're doing. And you have just broken it down in a way even a third grader could understand. I, I know you've got to be an amazing parent because you've been a wonderful guest today. Thank you. On this very, very important topic because I'm very much about uh, wellness and self-care and lifestyle and how that is the basis. Like you said, taking care of yourself for everything that comes thereafter and everybody you engage with. Before we go, Yuri, how can listeners contact you about coaching and learn more about healthy mindsets and calorie deficits and all that good stuff? Yeah, I'm very active on Instagram. Um, and it's uh, at Coach Yuri underscore. Coach Yuri underscore. You can put in the show notes. Yes. Um, we and will. on Facebook. Just search for my name, Yuri Doroshuk, and you could find me there. Those are the two places that I live and breathe. I'm putting out fresh content every day. And I've gotten messages of, hey, Yuri, I haven't done your coaching, but I've been following you and I've seen amazing results just with your free content. And so I'm an open book. I give you all the goodies. I don't hide them in my book or just in my coaching. The value in coaching is being able to walk side by side with you, hold you accountable, and get you to where you need to go, right? Um, But if you're like, hey, I'm motivated, I'm accountable, I just need information, and I need somebody to point me into the right direction, I'm a self-starter, then you could get great value off of my content for free on Instagram. Sweet, sweet. You got to give it hard. We appreciate that. And again, appreciate all this wonderful information to help us become healthier, mind, body, and spirit. Folks, all of his contact information will be in the show notes. If you're driving or whatever, don't have a wreck. We got it for you. Just uh, find us on your favorite podcast player and You can hear this again and share it with your family members. That may be something you want to start out with is just sharing this information so you can all get on board for a healthy, healthier journey. Thanks again, Yuri. And thank you, listeners. Join us again next week. Remember to hit that subscribe button. I'm Dr. Mo. Thank you.